So <clears throat> this is the main hibiscus I'm using just because I've got some at my front door and they grow quickly um, and get heaps of material off them. It's called lazy hibiscus and this is the flower and the flower doesn't open up like other hibiscuses, it just stays like this so they call it lazy hibiscus for that reason. Um, it's good in salads too, it's got sort of a bit of a sweet nectar. Um, but in terms of how I prepare the substrate for fungi, just looking at branches that will cut uh, easy enough with a pe uh, pair of secateurs. So, yeah, something like this one, um, you know, fits in the secateurs, it'll cut up easy. Um, don't want the green bits, I don't want the woody, woody part. Um, so all you do then is um, chop up the pieces and then they're pressure cooked um, straight away. So just looking at uh, hibiscus as a substrate for mushrooms, different cultures. Um, I started um, putting oyster mushroom on the hibiscus and that worked really well. Um, initially I was taking this, the bark off the hibiscus which I've later found um, don't have to do that, just chopping it up into chunks. Um, pressure cooking it 15 psi for an hour in these small jars and um, <clears throat> just have a look at some of the different ones so um, Caprinus comatus it's a grain culture um, transferred onto hibiscus chunks um, so that, you know, transfer is pretty easy. Um, and we've got the Australian fire morel. Uh, put it on grain and then just wanted to see if that would go onto the hibiscus and it's definitely transferring and I think here I've got it's a pudding container um, it's a number five plastic so you can reuse them I'll pour agar in there and grow the culture on it and then because the container is bigger I can add um, different substrate materials to test them um, so that was a fire morel plate and it's colonizing the hibiscus so that might prove to be a good way to um, store the culture longer or transfer it into the garden easier um, then we've got rice paddy mushroom so the, that's um, colonized quite well um, on hibiscus again so it's these two uh, I think that'll that'll be quite interesting to use yeah. I'll have to work out what the next step is, whether I transfer it to bigger bags of hibiscus or 
use this as a starter culture to layer in amongst cardboard and cow dung or dried banana leaves. Um, still working on that. Uh, what else we got? Ah, oh, just a an agaricus agar plate shoved onto the top of hibiscus. That's quite a large agaricus from Tasmania, um, grown from spore. And what have we got here? Porcini. So I've transferred that onto hibiscus. That's pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, potentially I could uh, use that to germinate seeds or um, add this to say an oak tree seedling into the potting mix. Um, I'm really interested in um, trying to photograph the mycorrhizal association if I can come up with a way of doing it um, so you can see it or um, yeah see that connection uh, you know maybe put the root tip under a microscope and compare it uh, with the agar plate cultures um, I did a type of zarula, but the hibiscus was a bit was a bit too much moisture in there. I don't know if that one's going to work. I think some of the water from the pressure cooker got into it. Um, I'm also trying the big white parasols, Macro Lepiota dolicola. Um, I haven't really started yet, and the culture was a bit been sitting around for a while so see what happens there and I've got a couple of really tasty native pleurotus from the mountains um, that should be all right 